the Seven Seas Explorer. Oh, wow. Oh, look at this, Michael. A very warm welcome on board the most luxurious ship ever built. It just reeks with luxury around here. At £8,000 a night for the most expensive suite... Oh! Pop! Pop! A $150,000 bed. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It offers elite travellers the most exclusive holiday at sea. There is no no. Mm. You're never going to hear the word no. Now they've allowed cameras on board... It's a little bit of pressure right now <laughs> for everything. We go behind the scenes to reveal the secrets of this floating palace. Guys, we are getting busy now. Get ready. Where's the fish? Fish, fish. What does it take to run a six-star hotel at sea? You know, everything has to be perfect. It's about pride and love. But is it all plain sailing? <laughs> oh, my God. Can staff cope with the pressure of providing perfection? We're yeah, making nice. Look, look how it looks like. Let's go, the guests are waiting. They've got the best hotel in the world, and it moves with you. So come on board. Absolutely stunning. As we discover yeah! if the cruise ship can live up to its reputation. The pressure's on all the time. That's the biggest challenge. The Seven Seas Explorer is the world's most expensive cruise ship. With its sumptuous suites, an all-inclusive holiday could cost you more than £60,000. An army of butlers is on standby to cater to your every need. And its five restaurants are ready to serve the finest dining at sea. Today, the Explorer is in Barcelona. Its 550 staff are getting ready to welcome over 700 new guests. That's for you, I believe. Oh, yes, it is. Thank you. Yeah, that's right. My Beatles masks. The cruise director is John Barron. That'd be great for Beatles night, though, right? I want to check myself out in the mirror. Oh. Originally from Birmingham, He's been providing entertainment on cruise ships for over 20 years. Hey, Jude. But none as lavish as the Explorer. We've got $6 million worth of art around the ship, Picassos, Chagalls, $4 million worth of chandeliers everywhere, this beautiful 6,000 crystals in the main chandelier in our atrium area. The carpets are so plush and you could just sleep on them if you had too much to drink the night before. <laughs> With the previous guests having just left, there are only hours to prepare such luxurious surroundings for a new cruise, heading from Barcelona to Southampton. Under the most pressure is chief housekeeper, Sunny. We have to make 350 suites ready in a very short period of time. It's a race with time. That's why I'm wearing trousers and sneakers today. <laughs> but when you have guests that expect the best, what kind of suites will greet them? Everything needs to be you know, lined up and straight and in a certain way it's supposed to be. While many cruise ships have over 2,000 cabins, the Elite Explorer has just 350 suites, but they all need to be perfect. I love it. I, embarkation is very exciting, yeah. From the cheapest suites, costing over 700 pounds a night. It's a lot of things happening at the same time, but it's good. This is Grand Suite. To the Grand Suite at almost 3,000 pounds a night. I love this particular suite because I love the, I love the leather wallings. If I was a guest, I would always stay in the Grand Suite. <laughs> if I had the opportunity. Maybe one day, you never know. <laughs> but for those with very deep pockets, there's the Regent Suite. At £8,000 a night, it's the world's most expensive cruise ship suite. I mean, it's the best. You'll never find it anywhere else at sea. Measuring 4,400 square feet, it's almost six times bigger than the average British home. It's the most luxurious address at sea. Located on the top deck above the bridge, it's certainly got the best view on board. In charge of preparing it for the next guest, 
is the ship's head butler, Raju. Everything has to be perfect, immaculate, spick and span. The suite includes a custom-made Steinway piano worth £400,000, which a specialist tunes before every cruise. There's the collection of crystal the cleaners might want to be careful with when dusting. These are all Lilic and Murano. It's about 140,000, just right here on the shelf. And there's also a Savoir bed worth 120,000 pounds. If that's not enough for you, how about a golden bathroom with its very own spa? This has to be ready before the guest comes on board. But can they get everything done in time for guests who demand the very best? Across the ship, staff are carefully polishing the brass, while below deck, there's been a delivery of thousands of pounds worth of fresh flowers. They need to be carefully sorted by the explorer's very own flower arranger. But they're not put in any old vases. This arrangement is going in an 8,000 pound Lalique vase. But how do you restock a luxury cruise ship with over 200 tonnes of the finest supplies. Can you show me how much more you have to load? Facing that challenge is food and beverage director, Stefan. Are we going to finish on that? No, we're selling early. Stefan's team will load around 3,000 bottles of wine, 2,000 pounds of lobster, and 15 tonnes of fresh fruit. We have an hour and a half maximum to finish the loading. It's Ruslan like, looks busy there, doesn't he? Yeah, Ruslan is running, and it's a good sign, you know, uh, I like that. So there's a sense of emergency, and it's very important. The Explorer will leave port at 5 p.m., whether they're finished or not. And when you're a luxury liner, being delayed is not an option. We have to pull as many resources as possible just to load. We never want to leave anything on the pier. But it's not just about quantity. Oh, banana, chef. Very nice. Everything must be of the highest quality. Super nice. Yeah, very nice. Very good. Right. Sweet. Yeah. Right, ready to serve. Very nice. He's brought executive chef Michael with him to check the produce. But not all the bananas are ready to eat straight away. It's a bit wrong. It's half ripe. They have to be prepared for every eventuality. We are always ordering the bananas in two or three different stages. Uh, ripe, uh, half ripe and unripe. We're going on a 12-day cruise, so if we, all the bananas would be fully ripe from the start, then we wouldn't have enough. They would go bad, you know, halfway through the cruise. Luxury is luxury, all the way. This is my favorite part of the ship, the Constellation Theatre. Spelt the American way. This is my first cruise back on board. I'm a little bit nervous. Back on board, John is in the Art Deco-inspired theater, decked out with the finest wood paneling and handcrafted Venetian glass lamps on every table. It is beautiful, though. Have you seen it from here? It's such a great feeling to look out. Seating over 700 people, it's the center of John's entertainment program and where he'll perform his own one-man show. It's always nerve-wracking every single cruise you do just to... You need the right audience, and if you get them in your palm, you've got them for the rest of the cruise. You can just get into the whites of their eyes there. So I used to work on the holiday camps back in 1997, and that was a great place to learn your trade. Sometimes you can throw that in, like in my show, for example, and the Americans love that. All John needs are some guests, but there's still work to be done. Back in the 8,000 pound a night Regent suite. Good morning, Raju here. Raju is waiting for an inspection. Sure, thank you, bye. General manager Michael has arrived with Sunny at the suite's opulent entrance. To add to the wow factor, we have two Picassos just bookcasing the entrance. Hi, Raju, we have Morning, the flowers. Man. Thank you, thank you. 
Here we go. Where do you want them? They're pretty tall, huh? Maybe on the, the table in the front? Of course, the difference between a luxury hotel on land and one at sea is items need to be more secure. You almost dropped it again. Kate Raju? Yes. Very important. As soon as we sail tonight, I don't know if you have a ratchet strap, even a bungee strap, whatever, just make sure that that doesn't go down. Absolutely. Okay, thank we'll do you. That. It's time for Michael and Sonny to check the world's most expensive suite is up to scratch. I'm just checking to make sure that there's no broken pages. Will Raju get their seal of approval? Nothing is missed. For a long time, yeah, yeah, because of the fingerprints. Everything has to be perfect. Two neck pillows. Two neck pillows. Okay, so they have all that there. Right? Yes. Okay. This suite is our showcase for the fleet, so we want to make sure it lives up to its reputation. This is for men. This is for ladies. We want to impress the lady of the house. Absolutely. So is this eight grand a night suite ready? Great job. The suite looks very good. Thank you. Up to standard. We'll do as proud. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, Thanks for you. Later. Thank you. Bye-bye. The ship is ready. In a matter of hours, it looks as good as new. With the finest champagne chilled and waiting. It's now time to welcome the guests. The best thing for me, really, is when the guests walk on the ship on embarkation day and the first thing they see is that massive, grand chandelier. When you're greeted with a, a glass of champagne and then you look straight up at that magnificent chandelier, you think, wow. Their jaw just drops to the floor and they're like, OK, we're in serious luxury here. When I walked in, it was, yeah, it was, wow, this is really beautiful. As the ship leaves Barcelona heading for Southampton, for the guests, it should be a trip of a lifetime. We're going to party this thing up. We're going to see if it lives up to his uh, name. For all the staff, this is when the hard work really begins. They know expectations are high, and the pressure is on them to deliver. The start of a cruise is always, what are we going to get? Who are we going to get? How are they going to react? You just don't know what's coming up the gangway. The world's most expensive cruise ship is making its way from Barcelona to the south of Spain. Behind the scenes, 550 staff are striving to make it the trip of a lifetime for 700 discerning guests. The pressure is on. Good morning. Luxury means anticipating your needs before you have to ask for them. It's like you've got the best hotel in the world and it moves with you. Exactly. There is no no. Mm. You're never going to hear the word no. They're going to do everything that they can to make sure that they fulfill your request. It's about working hard to be able to play hard. Please read the program, though. We have skittles going on in the morning. Cruise director John is in charge of the ship's entertainment. And then myself, the captain, and the general manager will be dashing around each deck. To let the guests know what's going on, he's even got his own TV channel. And we do have a very special pre-dinner cocktail party. I love making sure that they know what's going on. Ladies and gentlemen, hello, good day. Which can be seen in all the luxurious suites. We create that program a month before the guests get on board the ship. But I kind of pretend that it's new to me. So I'm like, oh, look what's going on today. Now, this evening's dress code is elegant casual. We're kindly asking all of our guests. It seems John is already making an impression on the guests. Do you want an interview? If you're just yourself, they feel like they know you. This is great. I might not have seen a guest for four days, and they'll come up to me and they'll say, oh. I love watching your TV show. And what's your name? Courtney. Courtney? Where are you from? Virginia. West or just normal Virginia? Northern Virginia. Northern Virginia. Crazy Virginia. I'm like, oh, it's the best rated channel on the Explorer. <laughs> Is it your first time with Regent? Second. Or? Second? Yeah. What did you do before? 
best of the Mediterranean. The best of the Mediterranean. This is, this is this might be the best also of the Mediterranean. Yeah. yeah. I didn't like the worst of the Mediterranean cruise. No, I did cruise. not either. That was a terrible cruise, wasn't it? It was horrible, it? so we had to come back for this. But it was an, on another cruise line anyway, which we can't <laughs> name for legal and you, and reasons. You were there. I used to do this when I was 16, getting the bus to town sit and talk to people and have a bit of a chat and have a laugh. And are you on honeymoon? Yes, my 23rd wedding Your 23rd wedding anniversary. <laughs> oh, I love you, Cordy. Oh, Thank you for photo Thank you. you. <laughs> oh, kiss me on both cheeks. I love it. But that means they feel at home, right? They can just come and intrude on the, on the TV show. It's great. While John is looking after the entertainment, on the bridge, in charge of manoeuvring this 370 million pound ship, is Italian captain Serena Milani. She's one of a handful of female cruise ship captains. It's never boring to us. It's always something different. Being Italian, she brings with her some traditional European superstitions like having garlic hidden on the bridge to ward off, and not vampires, but the evil eye, an ancient curse thought to bring bad luck. We'll not make you do anything better or worse, but I like, and so far it's working because we were, uh, I was very lucky. No crashes just yet. <laughs> Hopefully she won't need any luck as the explorer enters the busy port of Malaga, the birthplace of Picasso an artist whose work adorns the walls of the ship. A local pilot is coming on board to help navigate. When you're at the helm of a ship as special as this, there's a lot at stake. With a side door opened, the pilot's boat will need to pull alongside the explorer perfectly, allowing him to jump on board safely. Even the easiest port can become challenging or if you underestimate, if you are too confident in what are you doing. Pilot boat approaching. The pilot boat changes direction. It then needs to match the explorer's speed. There's no room for error. One slip against the 55,000 ton cruise ship could be disastrous. He's on board safely. With the pilot's local knowledge, six, seven, six. they'll try to avoid any nearby fishing boats. Okay, we are almost alongside. Four, zero, and safely four, zero. dock. Hopefully, with all the expensive vases intact. Okay, we are alongside one and two. The luxury ship has arrived in Malaga, allowing the well-heeled guests to taste the delights of southern Spain. This one is a finger licker. Because after you're done eating it, you'll want to lick your fingers again. What they don't realize is the work that goes on while they're away. Behind the scenes... Here we're going to go to the uh, expensive item freezer and I have to wear a jacket doing a stock take of the luxury stores That's where I live. is food and beverage director Stefan. What we have here, we, uh, we have the caviar, individual portions of caviar, large cans of caviar. We're talking, uh, I don't know, 20, 30,000 dollars of caviar. We have uh, the lobsters, we have uh, the foie gras. Foie gras in French. Every voyage, the explorer can get through up to eight kilograms of caviar. You don't run out of uh, caviar, you don't run out of foie gras. It's just not going to happen. At around minus 25 degrees, it's not somewhere to stay too long. Fogs on the glasses and red nose and red ears. I keep it close to my face so they're gonna go quick. While Stefan warms up, Elsewhere in the hidden world below deck, Chief Housekeeper Sunny is in a laundry room like no other. I come to see the laundry master to see if there's any issues, if everything is working properly. 
Running 24 hours a day, a team of 12 have a mountain of luxury linen and bedding to clean. These huge washers get through one and a half tons of washing every day. In here we have dry cleaning machines that are used for special garments. Sunny needs to check it's all running smoothly. They don't want to ruin any of the guests' designer clothes. How is the guest laundry coming along? Do you have any problems, any stains that you cannot remove or any buttons that was damaged? Everything is good? For many of the ship's top-tier passengers, this is a complimentary service. We always follow the guest instruction. They would like to have starch, no starch, folded or on a hanger. Even their smalls get the five-star treatment. So, so we are folding and wrapping all the items that go back to the suites. Even if it's just a pair of uh, socks, then we wrap it in a white paper with the Regent logo. Everything that goes to the suite in the box, you're getting your clean laundry back and a nice little present. It's time for the explorer to set sail for Cadiz. The ship is gearing up for a busy evening. In the main restaurant, the tables are prepared with the specially designed Versace play settings. With over 100 grand's worth of these plates, they'll be hoping the sea stays calm. Have you been on before? No, not on this one. While along each deck, champagne is being poured for a special region cruise ship tradition known as the block party. It goes back to the old block parties, I think in America, where the residents chatted outside their doors. Hello. Hello. We thought, wouldn't that be fun to get our guests who have paid thousands to meet their neighbours? Cheers. Cheers. Getting ready for this exclusive gathering is John's photo bomber, Courtney, and her husband, Robert. I love photobombing though. <laughs> yeah, we photobombed before photobombing was even a thing. Oh, we did. In their 1,300 pounds a night suite, they've got a chance to watch Courtney's cameo. She's very outrageous. She's very crazy at times. I didn't like the worst of the Mediterranean. No, I didn't. Either. Courtney's going to get another chance to see John. It's time for the rush around the ship. I love the block party. This is my favorite time. After you, Captain. Now we're going to run. John will join the captain and general manager as they go past more than 350 suites on seven decks. <laughs> Meeting whoever's waiting for them. Otherwise, you don't get any. Cheers. Cheers. This way. That's if John doesn't get lost. Down here, Captain. Oh, they down there. They left already. Oh, Where are you I'm going? Get yeah, back here. I feel like Mr. Bean. <laughs> John pulls out all the stops to keep everyone happy. Every deck, I'm always like, oh, this is the best looking deck. This is our favorite deck. Or, oh, this is the most fun crowd. And they're like, you said that upstairs, I'll bet. I'm like, no, I didn't. This is a good deck, honestly. It's fun. Oh, here we go. Hey! I keep bumping into you. I know. What is that all about? Well, you know. But the main lady of the ship here. <laughs> Abigail. You can finish the bottle. Hustle, hustle. <laughs> well, hopefully that brief encounter was worth it. Good luck, party. How are you? Love it. Love it. It's one mad dash charm offensive. Oh, what a great way to finish. Thank you, gals. And then we're done. Tired? A little, uh... Yeah. Yeah, I'm a little... Gotta go to the gym. I've got to change my suit, I think. As the evening draws to a close, the explorer continues its journey to the port of Cadiz. Despite the success of the block party, for John, the key event of the cruise is still to come. I always gauge how the guests are going to be on the reaction at the end of my show. This could be the cruise that they all hate me. 
Will John hold his nerve for his big performance in the luxurious surroundings of the Constellation Theatre? The world's most expensive cruise ship has arrived in the Spanish port of Cadiz. Home of the Spanish Navy, it's considered to be the oldest inhabited city in Europe. On board, the 700 plus well heeled guests are getting into the swing of things. We've met some great people, we've got some great, great neighbors. Yeah. Of course, we never uh, see them, actually, they're in their room all the yeah. time. It's nice to take your best clothes on holiday and give it your best shot. <laughs> We're kind of boisterous. We like to get out there and, and make friends and kind of get silly. Since years, we carry a small communication system with us. It is always in my pocket, but only when we're underway. And when you put this kind of communication system on your nose <laughs> and you smile, everybody will use a smile back. From pizza by the pool, to French fine dining. There's not much you can't eat on the Explorer. But on a luxury ship, guests expect the freshest ingredients. I think it's this way. So today, food and beverage director Stefan... Quite excited to go with the, the chef here. ...is going with executive chef Michael to the local market to get the finest fish money can buy. This what you get. Sea bass, sea bream, sardines. I will buy some sardines, we'll serve it as a tapas. The chef has just a couple of hours to buy fresh fish to serve the guests. Press your finger on there. So if it dries up, you know, it's very fresh. But at the best possible price. I'm a chef, but I'm also a little business, not businessman, but I need to negotiate. So I buy at about 40 kilos. There may be a problem, though, when it comes to bargaining. Hello, sir, how are you? <laughs> That's a good style, they don't speak English. This is a little challenge sometimes we have. Cuatro kilos. Sí, cuatro, cuatro, no, cuatro, zero kilos. I've learned Spanish at school, but I don't remember any of it. <laughs> the other challenge facing our dynamic duo is quantity. Do you have a large amount? 30, 40 kilos? No, 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 no. Is there a chance Stefan and Michael won't get what they need? You don't have 40 kilos? 40 kilos. Will the guests miss out on local fresh fish tonight? I'm a little bit uh, disappointed because I thought it's going to be cheaper. Back on board, while some guests relax. Break a leg, guys. Thanks for. Uh, thanks for in the theatre, John's doing the sound check for the one man show he'll perform tonight. <laughs> With his own unique warm up routine. <laughs> Do the alphabet with my tongue as well. Right. I'm just hoping I don't burst out my suit. I haven't worn it for two months. <laughs> oh. Usually working a four no. months on and two months off schedule, for, uh, returning to the stage after his time off is nerve wracking. It's the first show after a long time, so I'm like, let's hope we get an audience. Honestly, this is honest. I feel like. <laughs> At least John has some lucky charms he hopes will help him. These are my cufflinks for the show, and I have my wife bought them for me. They're my kids' names, Luke and Benjamin. I have a routine, and um, if I forget the cufflinks in my cabin, I have to run up, even if it's a minute before the show. I never do my show without Luke and Benjamin on my arms. Will John's nerves get the better of him? Grande, grande, like this. Back at the market, and Chef Michael is running out of time to buy some fresh fish to keep the exacting guests happy. 4.5 euro. Okay. Yeah. 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 But it looks like he's made his first deal. Okay, good deal. I think we got our first catch. Okay, good okay. one. 40 kilos of fresh sea bream for 280 euros. Seven euro. I'll take all of them for 650. Okay. Okay, let's go. You see? We need to negotiate. Good, you're a great negotiator. He's now on a roll. 
Chef is going mad. He's buying more and more. Okay, good, good. I'll take 30 kilo. Snapping up sardines, Hake and Morbreen for another 250 Same. euros. Thank you. Gracias. Thank you. He's unstoppable now. <laughs> and he's now looking to buy a whole tuna. I prefer buying whole fish. Even the tuna, you know, when it's a fillet like this, uh, you don't know how fresh it is. That's a huge fish. But how much will it cost? When we're here, it's the excitement is that, you know, there's so much we would like to have, but I've got to see how much I have in my wallet. What did you pay now, 112? Oh, like two, dude. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I know, I know. He's got the tuna for 275 euros. I think we had a good deal today. Very good deal. So we are done with the fish. Not satisfied with over 100 kilos of fresh fish. Let's have a look yeah. What else is there for them to try? Do you like blood sausage? Boudinois. Oh, boudinois. Uh, British people love it. How about some blood sausage? A kind of Spanish black pudding. A raw like this? Oh, see. I don't no, need... It's good. Try. It's raw, chef. It's not raw. It's good when it's fancy, but you can also eat it, uh, you know? It's not for me. <laughs> <laughs> no good. No, I mean, no good, but I don't like it. <laughs> it looks like they won't be buying the blood sausage. If you say no good, no good. While guests are returning from a day out in Cadiz... As you can see, beautiful. ...and Chef Michael gets his luxury goods back on board... The world's most expensive ship is gearing up for the evening's entertainment. Oh, God. What time is it now? Backstage, it's not long until John's show. Take some of this Japanese throat crystals. It probably doesn't even do it. doesn't even do it. A bit of good, but... And he's feeling the nerves. I'm bricking. <laughs> Between now and 10.30 will be like a blur, but I like living on the edge, I always have. So, just putting my Velcro moustache together here, as you do. For two decades, John has been performing on ships, but it could so easily have been a different stage. 21 years ago, my agent at the time got me two auditions. One was for a cruise ship and the other one was for Les Miserables. Oh, oh, oh. I didn't get the part in Les Miserables, but I got the cruise ship job and I didn't really look back, to be honest with you. Met my wife at sea, now we've got two kids, and we would have been skint if I'd have worked in the West End. All that rent, London's expensive. As long as John's got his cufflinks, he'll be fine. Where the hell did I put them? Oh shit, I lost my cufflinks. Maybe I put them on the table out there. That would really suck if I actually lost the cufflinks, wouldn't it? I must have put them out there. I'm gonna go check. It'll be like disaster. They've gone. I have lost them, you know. It's time to leave the south of Spain and continue around the Iberian Peninsula. With over 700 guests on board, needing to be entertained. In the theatre, final preparations are being made before John's show. But he's lost his lucky cufflinks. I have lost them, you know. Oh, man, that's not good. I don't need any more anxiety in my life, to be honest with you. And I've lost the moustache now, though, this moustache. Ah, oh, there they are. Thank God for that. Look at that. Under the wig. Whew, I had a heart attack then. And I'm not even superstitious. I think it's bad luck to be superstitious. Do you get it? I don't tell that joke in the show. That would be the B material. Just got a text. I bet you, um... Even now, reminders of home come in. Oh, no, someone's at my front door. Look at that. Isn't the internet amazing? It's like 8 o'clock at night at home, so I wonder who's... Uh... Who's, who's coming round to the missus? I'll have to text her and say who's at the door. Yeah, she's replying. 
I bet, she, oh, what is it? What day is it? Friday or Saturday? I bet she'll say Chinese. Chinese. But thoughts of home can be painful. As much as I love my job, when you think about your kids and stuff, you know, like going to school and, and even texting you from bed, like Benjamin takes his iPad to bed for an hour and he texts me during the show all the time. It's like, you sometimes think, why am I, do why am I doing this? And then you realise that this job pays for them to have a better life. So... It's really, um, you get homesick. I, I am homesick every day, every single day. But then, I, that's why I keep busy. Thank God the drink is free here. <laughs> I only drink Cosmos, because that's my wife's favorite. I always take a picture of my Cosmo and I send it to her. I go, having a good night? Your cup of tea in Emmerdale? <laughs> Before John's show, there are hundreds of people to wine and dine. Spread across the ship, five restaurants serve everything from stir-fry to scallops, kebabs to duck foie gras terrine. Pick up two lobster, one fish, beurre blanc for two, please. Brussels sprouts for two. With 88 cooks in four galleys over multiple decks, it's quite an operation, especially when expectations are so high. What's one of the most famous aspects of a cruise? Eating, the food, it's everywhere. I'm a lobster lover, and I'm able to have lobster no matter what, wherever I am in the ship. I think I've eaten my weight in shrimp, because the shrimp <laughs> is fantastic. That's the only reason I cruise. I mean, the tours don't do mean nothing to me, okay? They absolutely mean nothing. I said, oh my gosh, why don't we order room service? Because we can, because it's 24-7. And I think I ordered three other dishes. <laughs> In the main galley, Chef Michael has the fresh tuna he bought in the market. Wow, look what I've got here. Super fresh, so I'm excited. But for any chef on a cruise ship... Hey, I want to marinate the tuna, yeah? There's one major challenge. So while you're doing the tuna, let me do a little bit of the potatoes, yeah? With no open flames allowed, all the cooking is done by electric rather than gas. So look at this, beautiful. And as this is the finest cuisine, attention to detail is everything. So can he still make a dish worthy of a high-end restaurant? So now we are ready to plate. Look at this. So this is what we call, we eat with our eyes, right? Fried leaf, and voila! Good job! This is in fact just one of 360 dishes available for dinner this evening. As another busy service begins, behind the scenes, dozens of cooks are hard at work. For Chef Michael, a huge part of his job is making sure standards are kept at all times. Fish is too small. I'm gonna call a butcher. Hey, okay, Omaldo, the size of the fish in uh, Pacific Kim, they're very small, huh? He has to be demanding. Okay, please, let's come and change it immediately, yeah? Make sure the green beans is green. This one's not green. Tell him to make a new one. Speed up a little bit. Yeah. But what about his tuna dish? Are the team preparing it correctly? This is something that they don't do normally every day. So, of course, they need to be shown how to play the dish to make sure that it looks immaculate, clean, and that the fish, more importantly, the fish is not overcooked. Chef wants it exactly as he made it. I, I need to have a look inside. I need to go and play. Okay, make it nice, eh? nice. Look, look how it looks like. Let's go, the guests are waiting. Now we are busy doing the finishing touch, as you can see. But the all-important test will come from the guests. From the market in Cadiz to the table. Ah, there it is. What's the verdict? Nice presentation. Yeah, it wouldn't go very well. Almost like steak. Oh. Very tasty. Uh, that's the important thing, it's tasty.
It's time for John's big moment. The guests are filling the theatre and enjoying a cocktail or two. But will they enjoy the show? Leading up to my show, I'm never sure what the guests are going to be like. It is, for me, the turning point. For John, it's showtime. Hello! What a day this has been. What a rare mood I'm in. Why, it's almost like being in love. Hello, everyone! And you get up there, just like when I was a kid growing up in Birmingham, Christmas Day, who's going to sing next kind of thing. Almost like being in love. Hello. Good evening, all the rich people. <laughs> it's almost like this is my party, have some food, have a drink, I'll do a few numbers for you, tell a few jokes. I thought innuendo was an Italian suppository. <laughs> the only real cure for seasickness, in my opinion, ladies and gentlemen, um, is ginger. Yep. And she's in suite 601, this crew, so... Uh... And it's almost like that on a just a, a massively more grand scale. That's not even English. <laughs> I'm just grateful I can do it still, you know, I'm allowed. They allow me to do it. I've never felt luckier than where I am right now because I just get to be myself. For me, I just come on the ship as John and get on with the guests like that. And I sometimes forget that I'm actually an employee and it's just really a laugh. With a standing ovation, how does John feel now? Buzzing. Oh, man. Oh, I'm delighted. Woo! <sighs> Over the moon. They were great, weren't they? Oh, man. Ah. Woo! It's like back to work. What shall I do now? Um, back to the office, I suppose. The Seven Seas Explorer. Oh, wow. Oh, look at this, Michael. A very warm welcome on board the most luxurious ship ever built. It just reeks with luxury around here. At £8,000 a night for the most expensive suite... Oh! Hop! Hop! A $150,000 bed. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It offers elite travellers the most exclusive holiday at sea. There is no no. Mm. You're never going to hear the word no. Now they've allowed cameras on board. It's a little bit of pressure right now <laughs> for everything. We go behind the scenes to reveal the secrets of this floating palace. Guys, we are getting busy now. Get ready. Where's the fish? Fish, fish. What does it take to run a six-star hotel at sea? You know, everything has to be perfect. It's about pride and love. But is it all plain sailing? <laughs> oh, my God. Can staff cope with the pressure of providing perfection? Okay, make it nice. Look. Look how it looks like. Let's go. The guests are waiting. They've got the best hotel in the world, and it moves with you. So come on board. Absolutely stunning. As we discover... <laughs> if the cruise ship can live up to its reputation. The pressure's on all the time. Mm. That's the biggest challenge. It's been a week since the world's most expensive cruise ship set off from Barcelona, sailing around the Iberian Peninsula. After stops in Malaga, Cadiz and Lisbon, the Seven Seas Explorer is halfway through the voyage. Cheers. And now heading for Bilbao in northern Spain. I am blown away. This is just breathtakingly beautiful. 
Over 700 guests have been enjoying the opulent decor. With its crystal chandeliers and millions of pounds worth of fine art. But just as the 500 plus crew are expected to have the ship looking its best at all times, the staff themselves must also look the part. In the ship's French fine dining restaurant, while they're topping the steak tartare with caviar in the kitchen, restaurant manager Renato Shoes can be a bit also better polish over there. Is doing a grooming inspection of the waiting staff. I always heard uh, this expression, if you look good, you feel good, if you feel good, you do good. He wants everything to be perfect. Anis, bonsoir. Bonsoir. A little bit dirty here. Your nails, not too long, they are right there in limits. Can I see your socks? All right, very important, socks must be always half leg, please. Why? If you bend down, guests cannot see your legs. Can be a better polish on your left. Two remarks about the polish of the shoes. Having paid thousands, the guests expect the highest standards and the height of luxury. Very good. Thank you. But that doesn't mean they can't enjoy some more humble pursuits. So it's three points in this hole and five points in this hole. Today, in the opulent main atrium, cruise director John is hosting a game of bago between guests and some of the senior officers. Whoa! For those of you who don't know, it involves throwing bean bags into holes on a board. When it comes to having fun, you don't want to have a stuffy environment. You kind of still want to go back to basics. That means playing bago in the atrium with the officers. It's, it's nice that I can bring a bit of normalcy to all this grandeur that's going on. When you win, your tongue kind of like that. Oh, do I? Yeah. <laughs> My Benny Hill impression. <laughs> When you're trying to have fun on a high-end ship, though, you need to be careful. A few years ago, when the ship was just out, we were playing bago down here, practicing, and the vase was empty. So I thought it would be a good idea to give the guests 10 points if the bag went in the vase. The general manager came along and said, this isn't any old vase, this is a $10,000 Lalique. <laughs> Keeping the guests happy is a huge operation for all 550 staff. Unlike most cruise ships, there are around three crew members for every four guests. One team with a bigger role than most is the one keeping everyone well hydrated. Let's go, Didi. Half an hour to pick up two bottles of wine. Let's go. <laughs> Georgiana is the head sommelier, in charge of a team of eight. My advice is to be next to Didi. He will help you out. Today, she's trying to motivate her team for an exclusive wine tasting event, showcasing the range of vintages on board. You have Alina. Alina, good morning. <laughs> Alina is sleepy, huh? After she gets a glass of wine, she will be more interactive. Good morning. Good morning. How are you? Excellent, all the time. <laughs> Let's go this way. Georgiana has the key job of choosing the best wines from the drinks provision store. I think I'm done with this, yeah. I give you a... No, I don't need a box. No, I'm very good. No. Thank you, Rogelio. Have a good day and see you soon. Do not miss me, yeah? <laughs> I'm from Romania. We are big producer of wines over there. But we just have, like, let's say, a small problem. We don't export because we drink it all. <laughs> Very good. I'm important at all time. You know, my role is just to keep the people hydrated, and it's quite great. This job has seen her gain a particular nickname. Do you know how this guy called me? Wine Barbie. <laughs> so they said they never see a lady beautiful and carrying so many wines and so good wines. <laughs> it's just fun, you know. But will her choices satisfy the discerning guests? I'm a wine snob. I only like California wine. 
period. That oh, would be an espresso there. martini because you go all day. You need that little espresso yeah. in the afternoon. A little pick me up. Yeah. I don't like French. I don't like Spanish. I don't like any of them. I'm just good old fashioned America. We could drink champagne enough caviar from this morning. It's a, not that I was up for that after my hangover from last night. So I think we are all set, right? It's time for Georgiana's wine tasting. Are we missing something else? No. An event that gives her a great chance to show off her knowledge to the guests. I'm hoping that they all enjoy our wine selection, that they will get to know how many oh, complimentary wines we have on board. Every year, the opulent ship serves around 150,000 bottles of wine. We can start, we can open. From the world. That's the equivalent of 440,000 large glasses of wine at your local pub. It's never too early, and if you're watching the time, it's already one o'clock, ma'am. That's right. <laughs> but on a luxury cruise like this, the guests have high expectations. We've been on um, river cruises where the wine was not good, and I have mentioned it, and I do buy a lot of wine, I do drink wine. As I get older, I want better. So Georgiana and her team must be at the top of their game. I remember my first wine tasting. I was shaking as a jelly. I felt that I don't remember nothing. I barely could hold the microphone. I was very, very nervous. Speaking in front of the people, it's quite difficult sometimes. Here you will see the body of the oh, wine. You will see that. that it's a medium body. So the wine is not very, very rich. It's a medium wine, but it's great to enjoy um, with meat as well, uh, perfect with the cheese. Okay, it's on my list now. Of course, <laughs> that's the way. That's where we were at. Not bad, a little bit more. <laughs> Fortunately, Georgiana's wine choices seem to have won them over. Enjoy. Cheers, enjoy. Thank you. I'll you stay with you guys. Wine, sir. I will let the other half go. You need to finish all these wines. That's why you open them. <laughs> I can work on it. This cruise, Georgiana is set to fulfill a lifetime ambition and visit the wine capital of the world, Bordeaux. You need to have a passion, and Bordeaux is my passion. Bordeaux is the wine country, the wine lovers, the... Yeah, it's Bordeaux is great, and I need to go for it. Hopefully, it will be everything she's dreamt of. In the Constellation Theatre, a cast of 12 young performers are preparing for one of the cruise's big shows. There's talent here from Broadway and West End Productions. The dance captain is 23-year-old New Zealander Tori, and she's got some last-minute adjustments to make. This is actually my first time being the dance captain, so we only got, as a cast, we only came on board a couple of weeks ago, so we're all pretty much new to the company. Tonight's show is World Rhythms, which features a whole host of dancers from around the world. The cast has the challenge of mastering moves from Spain, Greece, the Philippines, China, and Ireland. I really struggled with the Irish dancing. Um, I never, I'm not a tapper, um, picking up the fast feet. You've got to get all the beats in and everything like that. So, me personally, that was hard. And also the long hours, they, they really get you, not just mentally and keeping the content in, it's also physically as well. With so many complicated dance moves to learn, can they pull it off? Watching on is John. So it's really full on. They do four shows a cruise. They have mic rehearsals, dress rehearsals, technical rehearsals. They have social duties as well, so they attend cocktail parties. Uh, they're really on the front line. And that's the thing about a cruise director. You, oh, what to say? Hello. Good morning. Good morning. And good evening. Hello. Tonight we take you on a spectacular voyage. After a quick sound check, it's time to wish Tori luck. I'll pop backstage okay. and say good luck. <gasps> Thanks, John. Break a leg. <laughs> Hopefully not. <laughs> no. <laughs> While John is looking for a big response from the guests. 
There's always a bit of anxiety. In theory, they should get up on their feet tonight. So, fingers crossed, if the Irish dancing section doesn't get them, we'll be kind of pushing treacle uphill for a few days. No pressure, then. The world's most expensive cruise ship is sailing around the coast of northern Spain, heading for Bilbao. With over 700 people to feed, the 88 cooks are hard at work. How many is that? How many is that? Cooking the meat perfectly is both a delicate and huge operation, with around two tons of beef tenderloin served every cruise. When it's slow, sometimes we have a tendency to relax. In the main dining room, restaurant manager Renato... Energy, yes? ...is pumping up his team ahead of the evening service. Thank you. Good service. But, uh, <gasps> they seem ready. It's very important when the guests enter in the restaurant and they, they feel this energy. Yeah. That's why we are. We make the difference. <laughs> Feeling the energy in the steak restaurant are friends Deborah, Susan, and the two Cathys. Three rules: no laughing, no joking, no having fun, and we break them every day. <laughs> We're all widows, but every day we toast, we toast the health and, and the, boys, the boys, our husbands. Every day. So. Life does go on, and you can have fun, and we can have a great time together. These friends certainly have a good reason to try and enjoy life on the cruise to the maximum. We always say our husbands would come down and kick our ass if we were laying on the couch doing nothing. They, don't, they wouldn't want that for us. Four of them head to the theatre, along with hundreds of other guests, ready for the big show. Backstage, the ship's new dancers are moments away from their first big performance, featuring an array of dance styles from across the world. There's a lot of elements in the show that are very stressful. <laughs> Dance captain Tori is feeling anxious about the show's technical elements. This one is honestly, I think, the most challenging because it's we go off and get changed and come back on. And if you, you know, don't do your zipper the right way, you don't make it on the stage. And then you have to try and get yourself back in, you know, tap back in. And um, yeah, it's, I think we have about nine costume changes. In front of house, John's piling on the pressure. I'm hoping for a big standing ovation. And if it doesn't happen, I'll just make them. If he starts the stunning ovation, everyone will follow. <laughs> He's up for it. It's good. With the costume changes piled up, will Tori and her cast of new performers cope with the demands of their first big performance? The thing that I stress most about is the actual technical element. Sometimes a skirt will come flying off halfway between the numbers. And then you've got to make sure nobody slips on it on the stage as well. We also have a lot of props. We have ribbons um, in the Asia section. <laughs> the boys are also doing these big drums as well. One time I got my ribbon caught on his arm and <laughs> we were like having a little fight on the stage trying to get it off. With their nine costume changes, the cast dance from one part of the world to another. They don't want to find themselves with a tricky zipper. It all builds to the Irish dance section Tori is most nervous about. After weeks of rehearsals, can they nail this and get the standing ovation John was hoping for?
great. Very relieved. Everyone stood up then. Thank you. Thank you for coming. Backstage, they're buzzing. Yeah. I think we made a pretty good impression. It's actually like pretty rare. Yeah. Um, yeah, long. standing ovations are very, very rare. So it was nice. It was a nice feeling. Well, that's one down. But during their six months on board, they've another 70 shows to do. As the glasses are cleared away and guests head to their suite, a hush descends on the world's most expensive cruise ship. But overnight, this ship doesn't clean itself. It's time for the night crew. Lewiston is the ship's night supervisor. I'm full night, I'm awake, so my duty is always in the night. In charge of a team of seven, he must have the ship looking as good as new by the morning. Tonight, his special project involves cleaning three of the bespoke Czech glass chandeliers in one of the main public areas. Yeah, it's a big job and it takes much time. Well, be careful with this one when we are cleaning it. It can break, very easy to break. Fortunately, the sea is calm. So we do it every month. If it is a rough weather, I cannot do it because the ship is moving. <laughs> but Lewiston isn't the only one up. Going round every deck is Raza, the night steward. Polishing any shoes guests have left outside their suites. Thank you. The main activity is taking place in the kitchen. In the 24-hour bakery, a mountain of dough is being kneaded and stretched in giant machines. They need to get 12 different kinds of bread ready for the morning. While an overnight dessert team is making sure everything from cheesecakes to macaroons are ready for the sweet-toothed guests. Preparing for breakfast, the room service trays are already lined up with the first orders being delivered at 6 a.m. Lewiston's onto the final chandelier. Is it tiring doing that, Lewiston? Ah, uh, yeah, the neck is spinning when you look up. <laughs> no wonder when you've just cleaned around 1,500 crystal bulbs. OK, we are done. Thank you. It's time for Lewiston to get a well-deserved rest. As dawn breaks, around 100 room service trays are hastily delivered across the ship. Good morning. But in the main restaurant, a very special breakfast is being set up, overseen by Stefan. It's one of our very luxury touch with caviar and champagne available for breakfast. They celebrate the way they should be. Oh, yes. And today in France is Mother's Day. I don't know if you know that. Did you call your mother already? Not yet, not yet. OK, well, I will. I will call my mother too. But not everyone is excited about caviar for breakfast. Three for you, one each? Yes, please. All right. And she says trepidly. Kathy isn't sure it's for her. Not sure if it's the texture. Saltiness, but it's, probably the it's or the yeah. in your mouth. <laughs> yeah, exactly. <laughs> Caviar is one of the most highly sought-after foods in the world, selling for up to thirty thousand pounds a kilo. <laughs> I'm scared. Okay, I'm really nervous. I'm shaking. Don't be nervous. Why are you nervous? Okay, I'm just gonna pop it in. That's right. There you go. Kathy doesn't look convinced. <laughs> How was it? Try, try your Drink one. some champagne and try your some. orange one, Kathy. I think it's much better. I had to get some. Try taking a bite. That's what I did. There you go. Second time lucky? That was better. It didn't pop that time. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's at least something.
the explorer has arrived at a rather gloomy Bilbao, the largest city in northern Spain. Around a dozen free exclusive excursions are setting off to explore the local area. But Kathy and her friends are joining John on one more unusual than others. We're sheep herding today in Bilbao. <laughs> I hope they have a dog, otherwise they'll have me scurrying around. The luxury travel market has seen a growing trend towards experience-led tours. We're very curious to see this Sheep herding in Spain. Meaning it's all about giving guests a flavour of traditional local culture, even if that means going to a sheep farm. Oh, don't look over there. Honestly, my stomach just turned over. 2,000 feet high in the Basque Mountains. We're literally in the clouds. So John's here to keep spirits high. Oh, don't you just love dogs? I've got a cavapoo myself. A cavapoo? Yeah. They're here to watch Argy, a Basque sheepdog. Oh. Who's trying to keep these native Lacha sheep in check. Oh, oh, look, he's, he, oh, there you go, you tell him. <laughs> look at him. Oh, I tell you, one, that's like my wife, that one. <laughs> Honestly, having a go back. This one's Casey in the dog out. He's like, I'm not taking this. I'm not, I don't want to be with the crowd. Not being with the crowd is rather the spirit of this unconventional tour. This is great. John's certainly trying to sell it. That was worth the drive. But has it been too off the beaten track for some of the guests? Very good, though, isn't it? The jury is still out. The world's most expensive cruise ship is in Bilbao. It's the final furlong of a two-week voyage. The 550 hard-working crew are desperate to impress and finish on a high. Oh, wow! With guests away soaking up the Spanish culture... Sonny will be having a fit when we walk back on with manure in our feet. Back on board, Sonny is dealing with more delicate issues. Every suite is adorned with Italian Carrera marble. That's the same type of marble used in Michelangelo's Renaissance carvings. And it all needs the utmost care and attention. We have to really hurry up because it can happen that the guests come back from the tour earlier than, than usual, so it's always a race with time. With over an acre of marble throughout the ship, there's a lot to cover in a short space of time. We're like fairies, yes. We come in and do all this and the guests don't even see it. We just, like we are invisible, it, it just happens. But away from the marble, Sunny spotted a problem that needs urgent attention. Uh, we have in suite 608, the door frame is a little bit scratched. And she's calling in the cavalry. I came in here and then I saw that there is a scratch. Okay. You see this one, the white paint. I don't know if you can... Just to paint on the bits. This is just uh, paint in the pan. I don't use the regular can with the paint and I don't need brush. I have this pan, but paint is already inside. Alex is one of just two upholsterers on call 24-7 for any wear and tear across the entire ship. It's very interesting for me because it's new day, it's new challenge. Between Alex and his trusted sidekick, Milky, there's no wallpaper that doesn't get changed and no door that doesn't get painted. Personally, that's keep me alive. And it's all done in secret, whilst the guests are off the ship. What they can do, that's my job and I love it. Excellent job, Milky. Thank you. OK, thank you so much. After Bilbao, the world's most expensive cruise will be stopping off in the French city of Bordeaux. Good morning, everyone. Sometimes I think that it's too early for some of you to taste wine. 
but for me, for sure, it's too late. For head sommelier Georgiana, it's a dream come true to be able to visit the home of some of Europe's finest wines. French wines, they are a little bit more fancy. They are asking for nice food. Before they arrive, she's trying to bring the rest of her team up to scratch on French vintages. I prepare for you a beautiful Bordeaux. Bordeaux coming from? <clears throat> hmm? In France? Um, I would like to move forward. But it appears that some of her team aren't as enthusiastic as she is. Beautiful legs, yeah? Are you talking about mine or wine? Wine legs. Ah, wine legs, okay. <laughs> With the most expensive bottle of wine on board priced at over 1,000 pounds. Cheers, very nice over there. It's imperative that Georgiana's team know every detail about the wines they serve. Somebody's asking me which one is your favorite. Super simple, guys, all. Hopefully, they'll be as excited as she is by the time they get to Bordeaux. land and in the heart of the Basque countryside. Come on, let's do this. Guests are getting a flavour of local life with a visit to a Spanish sheep farm. Oh, it doesn't smell too bad, actually. What? No! <laughs> I just caught it. Somewhat off the beaten track, cruise director John oh. has gone along to see what the guests make of it. It's a little, little ripe. Oh. oh, God, my eyes are watering now. This is not Explorer. It's now time to meet and greet the local Basque lecture herd. I'm scared to touch them, mate. Hello. Do you want to check Facebook? Do you want to check Facebook? Should we have a selfie? I just want to touch it. But you... Oh, shit. Look what you did. I'm scared all the way. I don't know where this hand was, but it, they didn't like it. Turns out John might be too used to a luxury cruise ship. That's not my cup of tea, really. The sheep also produce a local cheese called Idiathabel. I hope the smell is from the farm and not the cheese. That's all I'm saying. And after seeing where it comes from, it's time to give it a try. Let's do it. Try it. The rich, silky, popping caviar wasn't a hit with Kathy at breakfast. So what about a semi-soft, nutty cheese for lunch? Much better than caviar. <laughs> the Seven Seas Explorer is full of the finest cheeses on the planet. So how does this one compare for John? I'm not used to different flavours of cheese, to be honest with you. I'm just used to Cathedral City. Cathedral City? Mm but this is really good. Despite a rocky start, it seems the sheep farm has been a hit. Yeah. That was great. It was quite fun. Although John's still happy to get back to the luxury surroundings on board. The opulence is back. <laughs> it smells like a farm. It's hot. The ship is now setting sail for its penultimate destination, Bordeaux. And as the cruise is nearing the end of its journey, it seems a good time for Stefan to check the stock in the Connoisseur wine cellar. How is Chateau Hola Fit 2016 for dinner tonight? I'll join you. <laughs> While they offer dozens of complimentary luxury wines, for the more discerning customer, there's a list full of high-end wines to purchase. It's 2013, and I think it's just at average uh, $800. There's almost 100 different options to choose from. I hold it with two hands when I put it back. Make sure it's handled properly as well. These wines disappear so quickly that the ship must replenish its stock every week. Some of our high-end guests, you know, they're very into our connoisseur wine list. And it has happened where they've ordered everything that was expensive. And uh, I was very happy for them. 
The most expensive drink on board, however, isn't a wine. And that is a brandy, a cognac from Rémy Martin, Louis XIII, aged for 100 years before it's being served. And I think a bottle like this cost on the market just about $3,000. Good night, I'll leave you there. You're staying, I'm going in. Bye. The next day, the explorer makes the picturesque journey down the Garonne River into central Bordeaux. Navigating under the tallest lift bridge in Europe. A tugboat then helps the 224-metre ship reverse into position. We want to show our kids how we're spending their inheritance. <laughs> it's the penultimate stop-off before the ship ends its journey in Southampton. Right, we're here and we're clear. Oh, no French accent. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good afternoon. Once again, it's John, the cruise director, and the time is now around four o'clock in the afternoon. And ladies and gentlemen, we've made it. We're, it's five o'clock. It's five o'clock in the afternoon. I do apologize, ladies and gentlemen. My clock's changed for some reason, but that's another story. Uh, we are here in Bordeaux in France. Damn it. Why went wrong? Look. Did it really? This is four o'clock. Never mind. It's all right. At least they know it's live. <laughs> For the wine-loving passengers on board, Bordeaux is the highlight of the cruise. And that's an opinion shared by Georgiana. As the head sommelier on board, she's over the moon to be in one of the wine capitals of the world. Did you understand what he says? You recorded. <laughs> it was really on my bucket list to be here in Bordeaux and we are, we are super happy. We have big expectation to taste a lot of wine. <laughs> The Bordeaux region produces 700 million bottles of wine every year. As a training exercise, Georgiana's taking her team on a tasting tour around one of the oldest wine estates in Europe. It's a new experience and each and every chateau, each and every castle, each and every winery has different style of making. And it's nice and interesting to see it here, like in real, how they are doing, than to read in the book or on the internet. It will be different for sure. After a tour of the grounds, Come on, let's go. it's time for the all-important tasting. Some of the people there are saying that it's too early. This is the best time in the morning to do the wine tasting. Your palate is clear, it's clean. You don't even need a coffee. This is your coffee for the morning. It's so refreshing. Richmar is one of Georgiana's crew in training. Any flavors that you can pick up? This is a great chance for Richmar to show off his knowledge. A little bit of something very, very specific to Sauvignon Blanc grape. Or not. A bit of citrus. Yes, correct. A little bit of citrus. I like it. Do you? Yes, it's very nice. Today's been a dream come true for Georgiana. Bordeaux, it's one of a kind. They are blessed here. The soil, the climate, oh, this region is amazing. With a busy night of service ahead, she'll be hoping that some of today's information has sunk in for her team. <laughs> As evening draws on and guests and crew come back aboard from a day of sightseeing and wine tasting... Look our faces. <laughs> we don't want to be back. The 750 passengers put on their finery and head for their last dinner on board. Sir, Chateau Boursier, Bordeaux blend. Having spent the day in one of Europe's finest wine regions. Madame, excuse me for you. There's expected to be a huge demand from guests for French wines with their evening meal. Medium to full body, very nice. Okay. But there's a problem brewing in the dining room. Of course. Of course. Yes. The 
the world's most expensive cruise ship has left Bordeaux and is now heading for its final port of call, Southampton. Tonight's dinner service is a last chance for the staff to impress the guests on their trip of a lifetime. So, would you like to taste the wine? Every evening, the explorer serves around 400 bottles of wine to its discerning guests. You want me to decant the wine for you to great, yeah? As the ship has just left Bordeaux, there's expected to be a lot of requests for French wine. Head sommelier Georgiana is watching her team closely as they work. I'm looking for the small details because I've seen few mistakes, like few drops on the tablecloth that I don't want to see them in the future. Excuse me, madam. The red for you, so. Thank you. Yes. That's cool. Richmar is one of Georgiana's team. How everyone is enjoying this Pinot Grigio? Did you taste the wine? You like it? Yeah. You sure? Nice and dry. Huh? Tonight, he's on a trial run in the ship's largest restaurant. Full body. New bottle. New bottle. And he's just received a special request, a Bordeaux red. Amazing place. Amazing place also to drink wine. <laughs> so far, so good. But then... They have cork. Cork? cork. Yes. The requested wine is corked. In other words, it's gone sour and isn't drinkable. Another one here, it's very good as well. Chateau Roque de Sigur, it's uh, from Bordeaux as well. It's very good. You like it, sir? Okay, yeah. Yeah. okay. thank you. Welcome, sir. On a busy final night, how has Georgiana found Richmar's performance? It was crowded, it was very, very busy. But I'm very surprised and very happy. Bon appétit, enjoy. Thank you. He had a few situations that the people, they didn't care for the wine. The wine was poured, he was there, he handled the pressure. So I'm quite impressed and I'm very happy about that. So what kind of impression does the world's most expensive cruise ship leave on its guests? It has a wow factor that you are just not expecting. I just wasn't expecting it to be as luxurious as it is. It really took my breath away. I don't know how in the heck they do it with people coming on every week or every 12 days or 14 days and they switch over. If we could bring the dog on board, then it would be perfect. If the dog could come on the cruise, then we'd, we'd probably live on board. <laughs> We've had a horrible time. Oh. We're looking for a refund right now. We gotta talk it's to somebody. It's quite horrible. And in fact, we're actually asking for our money back. <laughs> Since leaving Barcelona two weeks ago, this luxurious ship has traveled over 4,000 miles around Spain, Portugal, and France. Ladies and gentlemen, a very good morning. And a very warm welcome to all of our guests to the United Kingdom. We are here in Southampton. And now, finally docked on the south coast of England. Follow me, here's the gangway. And who better to welcome the guests to the British Isles than John? <laughs> All the best, eh? Clear! Clear. Thank you so Safe much. journey. Welcome home. Oh, thank Can you. Enjoy our country. It's beautiful. It's gorgeous, right? This is the Brexit. <laughs> Exit, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> yes, we've got a little bit of a patriotism, a safe journey, all right? I didn't want to kiss. For John, it's a good opportunity to gauge just how successful the cruise has been. Hello, sir. I hope they pay you enough. <laughs> I, they feed and board me, that's all I want. <laughs> no, there better be a lot, because your addition is immeasurable. Oh, thank you. Thank you very much. Cheers. It cost me a fortune to get these compliments on camera, you know. For friends Kathy and Deborah, it's hard to say goodbye. So can we Facebook you? Yeah. Is that okay. anytime? Is that okay. Yeah. Okay. I might not accept, but, but no. <laughs> <laughs> but you can do it. You can do it. You guys are making me like, cry. Hang on. I have something in my eye. <laughs> I'll fake it, wait. No, look, I've got a bit there. It pays to advertise, leave the lipstick on. Despite the ship's luxury, grandeur and opulence, 
Sometimes passengers are just after a good time and lasting memories. Thank you so much. It was great. A pleasure having Amazing. you. Amazing. Come and see us again. We are. She's crying. She's leaving in tears. When people are like that, emotional, it's like you've done a, you've done a good job. It gets me every time. Take care. She's hard. She was like, bye. With all the guests off the ship, the cruise is officially over. Like a well-oiled machine. But there's no time to rest. Now we've got three hours to turn it around and start all over again. New guests, new problems, new solutions. Here we go again. <laughs> I think I might go to Weatherspoons for a pint. The Seven Seas Explorer. Oh, wow. Oh, look at this, Michael. A very warm welcome on board the most luxurious ship ever built. It just reeks with luxury around here. At £8,000 a night for the most expensive suite. Oh, hop, hop. hop. $150,000 bed. I mean, it's just ridiculous. It offers elite travellers the most exclusive holiday at sea. There is no no. Mm. You're never going to hear the word no. Now, they've allowed cameras on board. It's a little bit of pressure right now <laughs> for everything. We go behind the scenes to reveal the secrets of this floating palace. Guys, we are getting busy now. Get ready. Where's the fish? Fish, fish. What does it take to run a six-star hotel at sea? You know, everything has to be perfect. It's about pride and love. But is it all plain sailing? <laughs> oh, my God. Can staff cope with the pressure of providing perfection? Okay, make it nice. Look, look how it looks like. Let's go, the guests are waiting. They've got the best hotel in the world, and it moves with you. So come on board. Absolutely stunning. As we discover... <laughs> if the cruise ship can live up to its reputation. The pressure's on all the time. That's the biggest challenge. It's embarkation day in Southampton for the world's most expensive cruise ship. Welcome aboard. How are you doing, all right? Expectant guests are boarding to set sail on a 12-day cruise around the Baltic Sea, Scandinavia and Russia. Cheers, lovely. But the British weather isn't playing ball. Shame it's raining today, really. It's not a very good impression, but it's what to be, what's, it's what to be, it is to be expected, right? For guests paying thousands of pounds for their stay, the miserable weather is not a good start. Well, this isn't very much like Texan weather, is it? No, it's not. Cruise director John is doing his utmost to keep spirits high. Where are you from? Outside Philadelphia. Outside Philadelphia. Well, welcome on board. The weather there is much better than... Yeah, and they have the Rocky statue there, don't they? And he's going on the charm offensive. Nice to meet you. We haven't had you before. Oh, not in the biblical sense, anyway, but... Uh... <laughs> <laughs> But with it raining on the top deck and the suites not ready, everyone is stuck inside. Is the pressure is on all the staff to keep the new guests happy. Yeah, very nice. Hi, how are you? Checking in for their first voyage on the Explorer are Michael and Jane from Sheffield. Mike, although Jane Mike. calls me Michael when I'm in trouble. <laughs> oh, OK. Yeah. Publisher and occasional horror movie producer Michael has forked out over £10,000 to stay in one of the ship's superior suites. So what's down there, then? I don't know. They've got huge expectations for the next 12 nights. We chose this cruise because it was the Explorer, because we've been on all the other ships. All the other ships are absolutely fabulous, there's no question, but we've heard the Explorer is another step up. We like to get dressed up, it's part of our life, so we really enjoy that. Yeah, and Jane gets to choose my wardrobe every night, <laughs> as you can imagine. <laughs> I don't get any choice. It's lovely, isn't it? With their suite costing almost £1,000 a night, Michael and Jane are expecting a six-star stay. Let's go and check the bar <laughs> out. <laughs> For now, they'll have to wait around with all the other expectant guests until the suites are ready. Yeah, it's stunning, that. 
the housekeeping team are working at breakneck speed to turn around the 375 suites. It is actually the busiest day of being a cabin steward. <laughs> Clifford is one of 22 stewards responsible for maintaining the suite's perfect appearance. Today is uh, embarkation day, so we need to have the suites prepared as early as at least 2 o'clock in the afternoon, all of the, all of the suites. At the moment, I am taking care of 10 suites today, so, but I'm doing it on my own. In each suite, Clifford needs to polish all the Italian Carrera marble change the 1,000-pound Egyptian cotton bed sheets and fluff the 100-pound goose-down pillows. Last but not least, he leaves a welcome blanket atop the 4,000-pound Italian mattress. For our new guest. Welcome. All in only just over 10 minutes per suite. One down, nine to go. And I'm almost running out of time. <laughs> Outside, the skies are still grey. Inside, guests are waiting for their suites to open. Soak it up. <laughs> Soak up the opulence. But the high rollers have just arrived. Excuse me. Robert Greenberg, a retired businessman from the US, has flown his family over from Albuquerque. And they've booked out the region suite the most expensive address at sea. Are you doing all right? Yeah. Yes. I'll leave you in well, good hands. In great hands here. The luxury apartment on the 14th deck of the ship is as big as 15 regular cruise ship cabins, complete with two bedrooms, a gold-plated bathroom, and a master bed that's rumored to be the same as the Queen's. It set Robert and his family back 50,000 pounds. To the staff, the region suite guests are like royalty. We'll have fun. Right over there. Oh, yes. Oh, yeah. I'm looking forward to this. Amazing. It's going to be super. John has to make a good first impression. Enjoy. That's the region suite, right? Region suite hugging me? Yeah, that was the region suite. They just sort of zoned in on me there. I was quite pleased. Maybe I have more of an effect on them than I thought my silly jokes. With expectations sky high, attention to detail and top-class customer service is imperative on the world's most expensive ship. Luxury starts with customer service. And it starts with people feeling like from the time you walk on the cruise ship, they care about your experience. It's far more than even the quality of the food or the decoration. It's the way people treat you. Everything is done with absolute surgical precision in mind. If I wear black, they'll ask me if I'd like a black napkin to go with my outfit, which I've never been asked before. I walk to the door, they run over, open the door because I have two things of coffee in my hand. Pleasant, yeah. just pleasant. Everyone's here to have a nice time, and, and the crew's here to show you the best time. There's only 15 minutes to go until the suites have to be ready. Clifford is racing to finish his cabins. But he's also facing another challenge. Clifford is currently being assessed for a job promotion. I am a risk taker, so it's a, another challenge. So I have to take the challenge and be good at it, and that's it. I mean, my family depends on me, so this is my way of uh, paying the bills. So I have to work hard, and I'm proud of it. Not everyone works in a cruise ship. With the weather outside still terrible, John finally has some good news for the 750 guests. Uh, ready, John. The sweets are ready. Yes, thank, thank you, you. Thank, thank you, bye. Not to delay any longer, John dashes to the captain's bridge to make the announcement. Is that okay, Captain? Thank you, sir. A very warm welcome on board the most luxurious ship ever built. 
Seven Seas Explorer. It gives me great pleasure to announce right now that the suites are ready, so you can make your way to your suites from this point onwards. OK, shall we go up to the suite then? With Michael and Jane's 12-night stay costing a third of the average UK salary, will the luxurious rooms live up to the price tag? 815, right, 815, 815, yeah, that way. All the bags outside the room, so exciting. Off you go. We're doing it, we're doing it. Yeah, oh, let's exciting. go. Oh, wow, 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 wow. This is nice beautiful. big bed. Isn't it gorgeous? Loads of room, isn't it? Oh, there? my God. I so want to have a look at this bathroom, though. Pink. Oh, look at <laughs> this. That is absolutely gorgeous. It's you, double sit. Beautiful. Yeah, you can get all your toiletries on there. Look, it plenty is, uh, of room. Yes, yeah, lots of room for all for my your 13 toiletry bags. Toiletry bags. <laughs> Pop. Pop. And here we go. Cheers. Cheers. Happy Happy holidays. holidays. (laughs) Guests might be bowled over by their faultless cabins. My toupee is going to fly off in a minute. But on the top deck, it's a washout, meaning the traditional sail away cocktail party has had to be called off. Yeah, we cancelled the sail away party. As you can see, it's just like blustery, windy, rainy. But never mind. I'll say goodbye to Southampton. It's not a good start. But the biggest challenge is still to come. Just around the corner is a sea day, where the ship will spend an entire day and night at sea. Blow me overboard in a minute. Will the weather improve in time? And will the crew be able to deliver? Right, here's to the bars. It's evening on board the Seven Seas Explorer. The ship is headed for Estonia, but the weather still hasn't improved since leaving Southampton. In fact, this 350 million pound ship has had to put on its windscreen wipers. As hungry guests sit down for their very first meal on board, they're able to choose from over 360 gourmet dinner options. Anything from lobster to fillet steak and foie gras dim sum. It's all washed down with some of the 2,000 bottles of wine on board. Tomorrow, they'll be spending an entire day at sea. And there's a palpable excitement in the air. But the weather needs to improve. Whilst guests finish up their dinner, down in the depths of the ship... You want to see? One crew member going above and beyond the call of duty is Chef Charlie. He's my uh, tools, no? He's working hard into the night, undertaking one of the ship's most specialized and delicate jobs, carving ice sculptures. I'm from the Philippines and uh, I live in a small town. The name of my town is Paete Laguna. Paet means chisel, this one, chisel. That's why when you come on my town, in the entrance of my town, you, you found there a big statue of Chisel. Charlie's turning a 150 kilogram block of ice into the Statue of Liberty. It's going to be part of a showstopper display on the sea day. But with the ice melting, will he finish in time? Another crew member striving for perfection is Clifford. He's organising a surprise for a couple whilst they're out for dinner. Today's uh, one of my guest anniversary, so they went for dinner already. Now we'll make sure that we have a little surprise for them before they go to bed. Currently a cabin steward, he's got a big assessment coming up to see if he's ready for a promotion. So what do you think? Oh, beautiful. I hope my guests will like it when they come back. In a few days' time, he'll find out if he's made the grade. That's the goal, actually, to go an extra mile in order to please not just our chief housekeeper or our boss. The main thing is we have to please our guest. Elsewhere, John's received a special invitation from Robert Greenberg, who's staying in the most expensive suite on the ship. 
the guests from the Regent Suite invited me for like a special dinner in the study. So it's quite a treat. This is the first time it's happened for me to go to the study for dinner. Set aside for only the Regent Suite guests, the study is the ship's most exclusive dining room. So exclusive, in fact, that most of the staff members on board have never stepped foot inside. Whereas the rest of the ship has Versace plates in its restaurants, in the secret study, adorning the 12 place settings are bespoke, one-of-a-kind French china, each one worth nearly 500 pounds. And the walls are lined with over 50,000 pounds worth of art. You kind of have to forget that they've, what they've paid, otherwise it kind of can be a bit overwhelming. But just be yourself. Be yourself, that's all you can do, right? Maybe that's not a good thing. <laughs> Behind the scenes, down in the ship's cold store, it's a critical moment for ice sculptor Charlie. It's a uh, uh, dangerous, uh, delicate uh, part in, uh, in my carvings. No? Only one mistake, no? they're going to break this one. And now I make the, the lips. It's a pinch, pinching touch. And thing is done. He's finished the carving, but now has the delicate job of moving it to the freezer. <laughs> An armless Statue of Liberty just won't do. Oh. Uh, I had to throw it. <laughs> it's almost midnight and the brunch is tomorrow. The race is on to make another carving in time. The next day, to everyone's relief, the weather has finally brightened up. The Seven Seas Explorer and its high-paying guests are headed for Tallinn in Estonia. But before it arrives, the ship is spending an entire day and night at sea. With all guests on board for over 24 hours, it's critical that the 500 staff keep them entertained. Time is fast approaching for one of the highlights on the cruise. It's all hands on deck for the sea day brunch. Where's the fish? Fish, fish. Come on, now, let's go. Guests are going to be treated to an exclusive, no expense spared, mind boggling buffet. And it's expected that almost all 750 passengers will attend. Let's go, let's go, let's go, please. With preparations having started at four in the morning. Man your bag. Executive sous chef Frederick is managing the huge operation. 9.45, eh? I'm not running after you today. 9.45 in position, yeah? Everything is there, chef hat is there, everything, yeah? There is always a bit of pressure, you know, going in a brunch like this because it's a really big event. I would say even is the highlight of the cruise. No plastic apron, clean uniform, yeah? It has to be perfect. It has to be perfect, you know? That's why you can never release the pressure, you know? You always have to keep on top. Let's go! All four kitchens have been taken over, and there's 50 chefs preparing over 100 different foods, from crab legs to crepe Suzettes to seared Japanese tuna, and even 150 eggs Benedict. You know, they make sure at the beginning it's going to be bam, 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 yeah? With all the ship's resources being thrown at the brunch, it has to be a hit with the guests. Another area of the ship hoping to make its mark on the sea day is the boutique. A high-end luxury shop housing almost three million pounds worth of bespoke jewelry. We have Morganite collection over here, Kunzai, different shades of blue topaz, pearls, diamonds, of course, girls, best friends. Andre is in charge of the fine jewelry. 
right now in the store we have a beautiful ultimate color collection necklace uh, absolutely stunning 18 karat gold diamond different gemstones the cutting techniques are incredible this piece from the top of my head thirty nine thousand dollars tax and duty free of course <laughs> And for the discerning customer, there's also an extensive watch collection. The creme de la creme being this little number, worth a cool £450,000. People just fall in love with jewelry. I always tell to my collectors, uh, just walk around and when you see the piece that makes your heart go boom boom, this is the one. The boutique is only open whilst the explorer is at sea. So on a sea day, it's crucial that they make some serious cash. Sea day is the most important day of the cruise. This is the day when guests relax and the crew work, right? And you know, the night before the sea day, you never go to party. You have to have a good rest. <laughs> Tapas, fruits, and plenty on tipastilla. There's less than an hour until expectant guests walk through the doors for the exclusive brunch. No expense has been spared. Yeah, today's a busy one, huh? But tensions are high. The chutney should be in the bowl so they know what it is because here yeah, we cannot really see what it is. Because this you're gonna see fish coming, boom, there's nothing left. So give me a tray or something, we clean and we start again. I worked 15 years in London. Well, I work for uh, some, some big names such as Harrods, you know, uh, uh, Jean-Christophe Novelli and uh, some private clubs in the city. Okay, let's go. And my standards has not dropped, you know, everything has to be perfect. You just start to eat with your eyes, you know, so if the first impression with the eyes is not the way you should be, it's not a good start, you know. You have to have a body language, you know, you have to get a presence in the kitchen to make you feel, you know, uh, uh, respected by, by, by the galley team, you know, because you're serving a large amount of guests in a really short period of time. And you have to be clear and concise when you communicate to them and just make sure everything is perfect. Go, let's go. Let's clean that and we start again, please. And it's not just the cheese board that's failing to meet Frederick's Michelin star standards. Give me your phone, please. There's a crisis at the omelette station. One of his staff has failed to report for duty on time. Is a Trilock upstairs? Why is he not on the line downstairs for the omelette station? It's not the start Frederick wanted. You come downstairs now. My station is not manned. I give you two minutes to be here. Can he get the brunch back on track? The world's most expensive cruise ship is gearing up for a spectacular day at sea. In the main restaurant, French chef Frederick has only half an hour until the doors to the brunch open. Mashed potato and ash brown together. Yes. And in the boutique, Andre is after a big sale. There is still the pork ribs to be picked up. Let's go. Frederick has had to pull rank. On your back, please. Anna, move. And his omelette station is now finally manned. It's time for the brunch's showpiece. Charlie has been working hard through the night to have not one, but two ice carvings ready for the sea day. As he knows, moving them can be tricky. So he's decided to get some help. Hopefully, he has better luck than last time. So it's light. One down, one more to go. And breathe. <laughs> I just uh, need to take a break. There's a mad dash to get everything ready in time for the high-class brunch. The ribs, all the ribs. 
After a rocky start, the scene is finally set. All set. One just lies more like them coming from the main galley, which is here and ready to go. And the doors are open. With over 750 canapes, the choices are endless. You could start with a sweet pepper stuffed with crab and caviar, followed by some of the 20 kilos of smoked salmon and sashimi tuna, or for those missing their home comforts, there's always a roast dinner. Oh, and don't forget to wash it all down with some vodka or Dom Perignon. It's a lot of food, you know, even some guests tell me sometimes that they're just being, they lost a bit because they don't know what to take. There's so many options, you know, but that's what we want it to be. So many choices, it's going to be hard to choose. Main courses can then be followed with some fresh tropical fruit drizzled in molten Belgian chocolate, a little something from the Parisian profiterole tower, maybe, or a slice of Madagascan vanilla cheesecake. But is all the indulgence a hit with the well-heeled guests? The spiffer is very expressive because uh, so you can you can have everything. So you can have uh, from the fish to to bread to chocolate to to ice cream, whatever you want. Yes, I like it. Everything is perfect. The ice sculptures, the food is delicious. I mean, it's. Almost overkill a little bit, but it's it's a really amazing. It's uh, it's perfection. There's a lot of hard work going into it, a lot of preparation, organization. You know, it's an early start in the morning, but once the brunch opens, when we open the doors, and then the guests coming in, and everybody's like, wow, you know, it's it's wonderful. It's a beautiful day for everyone. With all the excitement at the brunch, nobody has been in to visit Andre. But suddenly, it looks like he may be in luck. So we have over here uh, the diamond ring with a gorgeous solitaire chocolate diamond, which is 1.5 1, 1. carats. Andre's managed to find a couple celebrating their 53rd wedding anniversary. And it's more than half a carat as well. Ooh, Absolutely stunning. Yummy. But are they in the market for something expensive? These are the memories that will live forever. I know. You know how it is, and then your girlfriends will ask you, where did you get this beauty? And, oh, my hubby got it for me on Explorer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, how can you help? So it was 15730 I could make it for 14,000. 14,000 even, we good. Yeah? Okay. All right. Congratulations. Yeah, we're good. <laughs> I, I, I need to give you a credit card. No, it goes on your room. And then oh, any card that is connected, yeah. Fine. Well, congratulations then. Are you kidding me? Oh, look at <laughs> He's done it. A huge sale in the bag. May I ask you over here, sir, uh, name, signature, state room, initials? The £14,000 price tag has put Andre in a very good mood. It really makes me feel great at the end of the evening, especially when I get sales like this. You know, this is a story, and I just became a little part of this story, part of their love story. What can be better than that? Yeah, this is what we're here for. We've stopped in a lot of five-star hotels, we've been to all-inclusive five-star hotels, and I've got to be honest, none of those hotels match up. We thought it was going to be luxurious. We had no idea that it was going to be this luxurious. If you go and you say, I want champagne, and I want it to be chilled at this time, and I want it, and I want to have a couple of other things on the side, they'll make sure that that's done. It's 24 hours a day, anything you want. How could you beat that? Extra towels, bedding requests. So I've got to go with 1206, yes. right? Down in the crew quarters, okay. cabin steward Clifford is studying on his lunch break. 
and I have to specify that the guests would like to have a two, two separate, separate duvets. He's preparing for an important assessment to see if he's ready to be promoted to an assistant chief housekeeper. It's one step higher than a cabin steward, so I need to be, I mean, I need to do a lot of trainings. So this one is, uh, I mean, it's just part of that. The new role would mean an end to cleaning cabins and instead being in charge of the ship's luxurious public areas. It means a lot for me. For me, for my family, for, for my wife. I mean, but uh, it's sort of a fulfillment. Clifford's high standards have caught the eye of his boss, Sonny. You know, when you walk around, just always look, you know, if you see something that needs to be tidy up. So she's decided to show him what his new responsibilities would be. And it won't simply be dusting the Chagalls or Picassos. You see these ones? The dead leaves yeah. should be removed, right? Yes. Clifford is ambitious. And uh, we like to see that in people. All these details are very, very expensive, and we have to be very careful when we are, you know, cleaning it. Cleaning so it. We have this special paste, which works like magic. We don't just promote just anybody just because we need somebody. We always take the ones who are the best at their job. They have to be really special. They have to be the best in their team to be able to step up. And this is the most important area. It should be spotless here yes. at all times. For Clifford, the reality of moving from behind the scenes to front of house is beginning to hit home. You have any questions so far? Well, so far, um, can I? Yes. This is why um, you know why we are going together so that you can see because this is something new for you. Exactly, exactly. The prospect of being in charge of the public areas on board the world's most expensive cruise ship is daunting. It's just a little, ner oh, yeah, for sure, ner a little nervous. I probably, you, may, you, you might have noticed, maybe. <laughs> it's, it's a little nerve-wracking. As the evening service gets underway... Yeah, we've got a reservation, uh, Suite 815. It's dinner time in the ship's six luxurious restaurants. Are you going to get the escargot? We don't get many escargot in Sheffield. We do. It doesn't have that much. We do. Michael and Jane are about to try their first meal in the ship's French eatery. See that? Cheers, cheers, cheers. Can I try we your We seem to do sauce? a lot of cheers on this ship, don't we? And just next door, there's about to be another first. John's been invited to dine with the region suite guests in their secret, high-class dining room. Gentlemen, how are you? This has never happened to John before, and he's feeling the nerves. Can I get a cosmopolitan, a weak one? Yes, sir. Uh, I'm getting nervous about the region suite. But he's not the only one feeling the pressure this evening. There we go, see how he's here. In the kitchen, there's been a special request. Despite having over 300 options for dinner, the region suite guests have gone off menu and ordered a seafood paella. We have swordfish, we have lobster, we have a tiger shrimp, and baby calamari instead of regular calamari have been used. Tasked with delivering the speciality meal is Kamlesh, who's had less than a day to create the dish. I love pressure. It makes me more stronger. There's no doubt in it. With more wine. This is the only time that I can show their skill, because here we, we follow only company recipe. An off-menu request from the region suite is one of the most important meals to be served on board. Thank you. It's almost seven o'clock, and time for John to make his way to the exclusive secret study. Wish me luck, guys. Wish me luck. He's used to putting on a show, but tonight could be John's biggest challenge yet. You're going through the secret entrance. Will he be able to entertain the ship's most important guests? This is the secret lair. It's actually just as easy as waving your hand in front of the door and it should open. With less than half an hour until service... Hey, come this. Frederick has requested to sample the paella to ensure it's worthy of guests who have paid £50,000 for their stay. If he doesn't like it, there won't be time to perfect another one. You have to double check and triple check everything just to make sure that everything is right, everything is up to the standards. You're only as good as your last meal, you know, as your last service.
On the Seven Seas Explorer, a busy night of service is underway. Do you want a snail? I'll try it. You're joking. No, let me try that. No. Good luck with that. In Chartres, the ship's high-end Art Nouveau restaurant, Michael and Jane are enjoying some typically French cuisine. Oh, my God. <laughs> I'm not saying there's anything wrong with them, but it's not my thing, is it? They really are beautiful. At least I've tried them on the best ship, because I certainly wouldn't try them anywhere else. But behind the scenes, Kamlesh is awaiting a verdict on his seafood paella. Do we have some uh, meat as well? Yes. I seasoned the meat uh, with salt and pepper, extra vegetable, olive oil have been seared. The dish is part of a special meal for the region suite guests, the highest paying passengers on board. It can't be anything short of perfection. Very, very good. Yeah, see, juicy, not dry. I think we just uh, check the seasoning before it goes, please. Yes, sir. Oh, well, good job. Copy. Good job. Very good. Thank you, sir. Okay. Thank you. Thank you, sir. With a thumbs up from Frederick, Kamlish now just has to wait for the rest of the region suite order to come in. Also aiming to please is John, whose very first dinner in the ship's private dining room is about to begin. Oh. How are you? Hello, how are you? Thank you so much for the invitation. Oh, you're going to put on a show for us. Yeah, of course. Frank Sinatra, whatever you want. In a 20 year career, John's had very few meals as prestigious as this. I'm a red drinker normally, but um, I'll. I'll... And I'm driving, so I'll just have a little bit. We won't mention the Cosmo I had just before. The orders are taken, and John's not holding back. Can I get the steak tartare from there? Oh, no, can I get it from there? Because you've got the caviar on the top, right? I love that one. But will he be able to entertain the elite ship's most important guests? Can I get onion rings? Onion rings. You can tell I'm from Birmingham, can't you? So I've had, I've had fun so far with you guys. It's been lovely. One filer. Yes. <laughs> one add onion ring for one. One lamb chop, 10 ounce uh, medium. Yes. And one scallop from short yes. As well as the special paella, John and the region suite guests have ordered food from three of the ship's menus. This is a special order, 851, yes? Yes. Uh, Christian, can you bring me the clams and the mussels, please? Kamlesh has it all to do. Guys, we are getting busy now. Get ready. John D? Yes, sir. In the study, <laughs> John's doing his best to entertain the guests. But it's a tough crowd. Oh, gosh. Get ready for a steady room plating, please. Let's go. With the dinner ready to be served and the 200 pound bottle of wine in full flow. Just a social splash. <laughs> <laughs> just, just a finger. John finally appears to be winning over the region suite guests. This wine is good. I wasn't drinking tonight and now I'm like, that's, my, that's what my headstone's gonna say. I wasn't drinking tonight, but dot, dot, dot. Everything ready, right? We are going to go very fast. But will the food be a winner too? Let's go. Okay, go. Go, guys. Go with this one as well. The guests are expecting Michelin star standards. I'm pretending to write myself an email now, even though I've been drinking. I can't even think straight. Oh, oh. It's a little, a little blood here. Wow. That's region style paella. Yes, it is. Paella. Wow. Having prepared and delivered one of the most important meals of the cruise, Camlish heads to the study to find out the verdict. Okay, so very quickly I want to introduce the, the gentleman in charge of everything here. Thank you. Good evening, Thank ladies and gentlemen. Much. So how is everything so far? Fabulous. Everything is fabulous. Thank you. Very good. Everything Thank has you. Been just tremendous. Thank you. And how is the cruise director? 
Oh, yeah. Average. Average. Average at best. He has days. I have my good days, yeah. yeah. Was a good One day. a year. <laughs> Expectations exceeded in the kitchen. But did John's very first dinner in the study do the same? That was great. I think it was a perfect evening. It's definitely a highlight of my contract, you know, because to go in the study with wonderful guests, I mean, they're just so lovely. It just makes it make you feel like, it doesn't, makes you feel like you're not at work. And that's good. They did that to me. So I must have done something to them to make them do that back to me. You know what I mean? Weird. The explorer is reaching the midway point of its voyage. Since leaving Southampton almost a week ago, the world's most expensive cruise liner has traveled nearly 2,000 miles around Northern Europe. Now it's docking in Tallinn, Estonia, in the heart of the Baltic Sea. Morning. Whilst guests embark for more sightseeing, in one of the ship's grand suites, cabin steward Clifford has been called for a meeting with his boss, Sonny. Please. Thank you, Raj. Throughout the cruise, he's been assessed to see if he's ready for a promotion. Having been a cabin steward for six years, Clifford is desperate to make the step up. Your performance is really impressive, and uh, we all see that uh, you're doing an excellent job. Your knowledge of the position is really, really, really excellent, I would say. You know, you know the job inside out. Your behavior with the guests is amazing. You know, the guests always come to you in the common cards, and you're always creating those moments for your guests. You handle your section and the guests amazingly. We see the talent in you, and uh, how would you feel if you've been promoted very soon? Are you serious? Yes. <laughs> so as a flex contract, my friend, you're going to be assistant housekeeper. Oh, thank I you. I hope I'm going to work with you. Oh, oh. thank you very much. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you're gonna do great. Thank you very much. Uh, nothing, no, it's just thank you. Learning from you is just, this means a lot, you know? Thank you very much. Congratulations and good luck. Thank you it's very much. It's gonna mean a lot to your family as well, right? For sure, it is. And uh, I'm gonna have to call my wife to let her know. Oh. Remember to check the time difference before you do. It's, are you still, are you, are you already in bed? Are you, what, what time is it is now? I'm so proud of myself at the moment. <laughs> to be honest, yeah. But I, I, I made it. I just got an approval of my promotion. If I can jump for joy, I would really jump. <laughs> but it's just that, my, just me feeling so happy at the moment. Uh, uh, just, I was so speechless. She, she's happy, she's happy, actually. She was smiling when I, when I had her on the phone. <laughs> so, Congratulations. Yeah, thank you very much, mate. Thank you, thank you so much. Clifford's new role will begin in a few months' time. 